Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about the basics of macros. Macros are a very useful and powerful feature in Foundry PTT. They can be used to help automate your game, and they can be used both with the core Foundry program as well as in Tangent with a number of other modules. Speaking of modules, there are some modules that you might want to consider installing and adding into your game. They are starting with the Furnace. The Furnace will allow the use of advanced macros, and it comes prepared in the Compendium with a number of sampled macros. It also comes with some other useful additional tools. You may also consider Dynamic Effects using Active Effects DAE, for a similar reason. The Foundry Community Collection of Macros. And then if you are an individual that likes to keep things a little bit more organized, I also su suggest picking up Macro Folders, Item Macro, and potentially the custom hotbar as well. And I'll be going over all of those briefly and what they add to your game. Let's go ahead and move on. And the first thing I want to talk about is the most basic macro that your players probably will set up. And that is by opening up their character sheet, going onto something on their character sheet, whether, whether it's the spellbook, inventory, whatever it is, and taking something and dragging it down to the macro bar. And then they click their character, selecting it, click the item, or whatever's on the macro bar and they select it there and then they can see that they have access to that now. Now let's say you also want to create a new macro. This is not looking at the compendium. We can go down and right click, oh sorry, left click. And then we have access to here. We can name it. We can give it a new icon. We can change it from either chat to script. The chat is the simpler of the two. Script is a little bit more complicated and that's what we're going to get into how there are already some script macros in place. And execute macro as GM, giving GM permissions. But let's take a look at the chat, ma chat macro first. Let's say I want to do something like this. And then I have already created a macro and all this macro does is when I click my character, it'll say hello. Because looking at the macro, I have chat and I have the command hello. This is not particularly useful most of the time, but maybe something you can use it for. Maybe there's something you can use it for. Moving on, if I want to create a macro that rolls 1d20, I can do it just like so. And I'm going to name it 1d20. So now I have created a macro using a chat, changing it to chat typing in slash r, 1d20, and naming it appropriately. All right, so that is the basic chat macro. You can change this around 2d20, 3d20, 1d6, 2d6. So if you don't want to install a uh, another module such as the dice tray module or you find it too tedious to type it in the chat window, you can set up here very easily that you can have it already set up in place. All right, moving along. I want to take a look at the compendium. Looking at the compendium, I can see that there are a number of macros that are available because of the modules that we have installed, such as the advanced macros, DAE macros, and Foundry VTT community macros. So let's go ahead and start at the bottom here with the token. And I want to import the shrink or enlarge and drag it right onto the hotbar. And as the name would make you guess if I click my token and click here, it will enlarge my token. Very simple, but could be useful if it comes up a lot in your game. Moving along, I want to go next to, let's go here. I have ambient light quick edit. Let's go ahead and import that and go to my light sources. I have a light source here. I'm going to click that and then click here, confirm. And now I have quick access to change the brightness, change the emission light angle, do lots of different things to this light. So I just in general suggest playing around with this, see which ones might be useful in your game. And you can also, I mean, as you look at it, you can take a look and see how they wrote the macro and see if you can take maybe any bit and repurpose it uh, play around with a little bit, see if you want to try something different. 
Alright, the last thing I said I was going to talk about is how some of the macros, or sorry, some of the modules I suggested help to organize and keep things a little bit tidier. The first one was the macro folder. When you import a macro from the compendium, or when you create a new one, you will see that it appears right here. And this can get very messy very quickly. Macro folders help to organize it, especially so that you can have everything here, and then quickly just drag it and drag it off when you don't need it. So that's the use of that. Item macro lets you, looking at the character sheet, I can go to edit, go to item macro, and let's say that this sword does something only this sword does. It won't happen anywhere else. I can have a macro here and then I can execute it through the item itself rather than having it on the hotbar. And the last one is the custom hotbar. That just gives you a little bit more space and you can also choose to color coordinate this, um, change the color as you wish. So that's about it for the basics. Um, like I said, there's probably a lot that you can touch on with this. If you have any questions, I will try my best to answer them in the comments below. There are people that are far more knowledgeable, though, on macros than I am. But I'm happy to help out as much as I can. Thanks, everyone. I hope this has helped, and thank you for listening. Bye.